Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Mendelson from My Surgeons and Consultants in Hollywood, Florida. And today I'm going to talk about diabetic retinopathy, but specifically how we can minimize or hopefully prevent diabetic retinopathy. So what happens is with diabetics, unfortunately, there can be bleeding in the back of the eye. When there's bleeding in the back of the eye, that is referred to as diabetic retinopathy. There also is a term called diabetic maculopathy, which I'll explain as well when there is swelling in the back of the eye that happens with diabetics. So why is this all important? What happens is, at the initial diagnosis of diabetes, 20% of all people when that first diagnosis is made already have bleeding in the back of the eye, which I'm going to describe shortly. As time goes on, a higher and a higher percent have diabetic retinopathy or maculopathy. That causes a decrease in vision and unfortunately sometimes a permanent decrease in vision. An interesting thing is, and it surprises many people, it is the eye physician who frequently is the first one to actually make the diagnosis of diabetes. There are dozens upon dozens of times every single year where I personally, looking into the back of the eye, I'll tell my patient, uh-oh, I think you have diabetes. There's some bleeding that's kind of characteristic of diabetic retinopathy. And sure enough, when they're evaluated by their primary care doctors, it does turn out to be diabetes. So the reason the topic is important is diabetic retinopathy and maculopathy are very significant causes of decreased vision in the population, not just in the United States, but throughout the whole world. There are things that we can do to greatly minimize or hopefully eliminate it. So first, most importantly, every diabetic should have an annual eye exam, and at the annual eye exam, eye drops should be put in to dilate the pupil. The reason for a dilated exam is when there is a small pupil, one cannot see the entire back of the eye. But when we put drops in and it's a widely dilated pupil, the eye physician has a view of the entire back of the eye and can pick up anything that's going on. So what specifically are we looking for? So what I'm going to show you on the screen is, for example, here is some bleeding. Okay. Here's other type of bleeding. There are different types of bleeding. That's called diabetic retinopathy. But under the umbrella of diabetic retinopathy, there can be little microaneurysms, larger ones called macroaneurysms. And a lot of people think it's just the blood products themselves leaking out that's problematic. That actually is not the case. Sometimes what will happen is this yellow are called exudates. It's lipid and cholesterol that will leak out of capillaries in diabetics. The exudates equally can cause a decrease in vision or even a permanent loss of vision. Lastly, the very center of the retina is called the macula. Sometimes there can be swelling. So pretend that the palm of my hand is your entire retina the very central 5% is called the macula. When you're driving, you use the macula for good, crisp, sharp, clear vision. When you're doing desk work, paperwork, again, you're using the macula. Looking at digital devices, relaxing, watching a show on TV, we use the macula. So I'm just going to put that back on for, um, for a second. So what happens is, if there is swelling in the macula region, that ability to drive, to read, to do desk work, paperwork becomes impaired. So retinopathy is, is, is blood, the exudates, but swelling is diabetic maculopathy, but it's really part of the whole same process. So a dilated eye exam should be performed minimum once a year, but depending if there are other factors, it should be more frequent. So for example, if someone has high blood pressure, if they have high lipids and cholesterol, if they have anemia, there are other conditions that make it far more likely to bleed. And then frequently it, the request is six month intervals. Now at the time of the examination, often we will get a test called OCT. OCT stands for Ocular Coherence Tomography. 
I'm just going to show you on another screen what the OCT is. It is, it gives beautiful high magnification of the surface of the retina, within the retina, and underneath the retina. So what will frequently happen is the OCT will actually pick up a problem almost always before the individual even knows there's a problem and sometimes even before the eye physician knows there's a problem. So to me, the OCT is of paramount importance and should be part of a comprehensive eye exam in all diabetics. In addition to the eyes, another thing that's important with keeping up with the, your primary care physicians is that there is a blood test called hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C is a blood test that really gives an indication of the previous three months how an individual is doing with their diabetes, with their blood sugars. So for example, if it's an elevated hemoglobin A1C, we know very likely there's bleeding. If it's a really low, excellent hemoglobin A1C reading, we know most likely everything in the back of the eye looks terrific. So I'm frequently asked, well, what's the magic number? There really isn't a magic number because there are other factors, but as a generalization, if the hemoglobin A1C is 6.5% or lower, high likelihood there's no bleeding. But for example, if the hemoglobin A1C is elevated to 9 or 10, I know there's a good chance I'm going to find diabetic retinopathy. Now, I'm frequently asked, well, does it really make such a big difference if the hemoglobin A1C, let's take that number of 6.5 versus 5.5. It actually has a profound impact. And the reason is 1% decrease, just going from 6.5 down to 5.5, that 1% decrease, there is 37% less likelihood of having diabetic retinopathy in the back of the eye. 37% less chance of maculopathy. Interestingly, with the kidneys and the neurologic system, 37% chance less chance of diabetic nephropathy or neuropathy as well. So keeping that level very low is important, but if that blood test is not being obtained, we have no way of knowing engaging. So besides the dilated eye exam with the OCT, you want to have your blood levels drawn at least every three months, hemoglobin A1C. Now, besides those two things, what else helps? Very, very important is to please don't smoke, please don't smoke, please don't smoke. It is widely acknowledged, and from my 30 years of experience, is diabetics who smoke have a tremendous increased chance of diabetic retinopathy. Worse yet, from my experience, diabetics who smoke, there is way worse diabetic retinopathy. It is far more severe, the far more decrease in vision, and less likelihood that someone's going to have long-term very good vision. Now, there are many reasons why the smoking causes it. That's beyond the scope of the talk. But again, without a doubt, all eye physicians agree, diabetics should never smoke that it's far more likely to run into trouble. Other things that are helpful, keeping those sugars well controlled, which we talked about. Again, the hemoglobin A1C gives an indication over three months, but there are things day-to-day -day lifestyle. So for example, with holidays, with birthdays, with New Year, with things like that, people tend to have more snacks, more desserts, um, cocktail, more cocktails, things like that. They all serve to elevate the blood sugar or have it bouncing around, again, making it more likely to be getting the diabetic retinopathy. We don't want that. So keeping sugars tightly controlled is very, very important. Other things that are helpful, exercise. There's many recent studies that have been repeated. They show that if someone exercises five times a week for 30 minutes, and by the way, just a brisk walk, you know, a going slow, leisurely stroll doesn't really count, but if it's more of a brisk walk just for 30 minutes, five times a week, doing that for a few months, on average, a diabetic will lose 12 pounds and the retinopathy will clear up and go away. 
that exercise, then it becomes extremely important. In addition to the brisk walk, other thing is increasing muscle mass helps. Now, no one's saying you have to go out and lift heavy weights, but just going up and down a flight or two of stairs every day. It helps the muscles in the backside, but also very light weights are helpful as well. So increasing um, weight training, just even negligible with the steps, very big help. So you want to do the brisk walk, you want to do light weights, very helpful, keeping the sugars down, keeping one's weight down. Other things that are helpful, unfortunately, diabetics are far more likely to develop hypertension. Hypertension causes its own unique type of bleeding. Diabetes, as we've talked about, a different type of bleeding, and yet they aggravate each other. So if a diabetic does have hypertension, keeping the blood pressure well controlled, extremely important. What's well controlled, it's not always so easy, but ideally, if it could be blood pressure 130 over 75 or better, again, 130 over 75 has a very big impact. And finally, there's some other things like lipids, cholesterol should be kept well controlled as well. So those are the factors. So most importantly, you want to have the eyes dilated with the OCT test. You want the hemoglobin A1C, three month intervals. You want to keep that level down. Exercise, very important. Keep sugars well controlled. Be careful with snacks, desserts, things like that. And um, other things like hypertension, lipids, cholesterol, you want them to be well controlled. Now, why is all of this important? Again, we want to minimize, but even better yet, prevent diabetic retinopathy or maculopathy. If you want more information, please go to the website. It's, you can Google it www.myeyesurgeons.com again myeyesurgeons.com and there there if you click the link to YouTube videos there's many different videos but also you can look up diabetic retinopathy and there's a lot of very useful information thank you very much for watching today bye bye